Good morning, dear students. We start our lectures, and today we're going to discuss vesicular disorders of the brain and spinal cord. And as usual, we start from the definition of the stroke. So, if you pay our attention on world health organization due to it, stroke is a sudden clinical site of a focal or global cerebral dysfunction with symptoms that last 24 hours or longer or lead to death with no apparent cause or uh, other than vesicular origins. Uh, if you pay our attention on a little bit more modern definition, the stroke, it's any objective evidence of the death of brain uh, or spinal cord or retinal cells of vesicular etiology based on pathological or visual findings with or without clinical symptoms. A little bit of frightening information. Nearby six million people only die because of stroke. Mortality is huge. You may see that mortality from the stroke colored our map into different colors. And as you understand, the red one is the most severe situation. And uh, if you see the gray one, it's no information about this region. Try to find your own country and I hope that it's not red. But anyway, the severity of the problem is huge and we need to know what to do with it. We have few types of the stroke. One of them is ischemic stroke, is so called brain infarction. What is that? It's hypoxemic lesion of the brain parenchyma section, which occurs as a result of reduced blood circulation in a certain area of the brain and insufficient provision of the metabolic needs of the nerve tissue of that area with a deficit of perfusion pressure. There are few types of ischemic stroke due to the toast classification, the most common uh, from those uh, types are large arterial thrombotic strokes and nearby 20% of all strokes it appears uh, because of atherosclerotic flux uh, in the large blood vessels of the brain leads to ischemia and infarction. Another common and the most common one is a small penetrating arterial thrombotic stroke, like lacunar stroke. Uh, the reason for it is one of the or more vessels in a brain are affected in a microatheromatosis. And the last most common type is stroke associated with all, uh, other causes. Uh, the, usually it's such as uh, illicit drugs use or overdose of the drugs, something like that. Hemorrhagic stroke, it's another type of the stroke and it's a cerebral circulation disorder which is characterized by hemorrhage into the brain matter under the arachnoid matter and into the ventriculus of the brain. If we will compare both those types of the stroke, we may see uh, the difference and it's very clear. Uh, if you pay your attention on a, a left part of the picture, you will see the reason for hemorrhagic stroke. The main reason, as you understand, it's a brain vessels rupture and because of that the brain tissue is soaked in blood so the main reason is bleeding and the main damaging effects uh, here is because of the bleeding. Uh, another part shows you the problem which appears in case if the person has ischemic stroke and the reason for it usually it's a combination of a cholesterol plug inside of the vessels and the clot that blocks the arteria. Uh, so what happens in a brain tissue? Uh, we will, the person, not we, sorry. Uh, the person will have the lack of uh, oxygen supplements in that part 
of the brain tissue which uh, causes the necrosis. That's why we're talking about 24 hours because you remember that, but anatomically the necrosis will start and not earlier than six hours uh, without oxygen supplements. So I think the difference is absolutely clear and I hope that you get it. It's very important to refresh your knowledge about structure and functional levels of the brain and vesicular system. The most important the main arterials of the head is carotids and vertebral arterials. They deliver all blood to the brain and regulate its volume. Like another step, it's superficial uh, brain arterials and perforations arterials. And the last place, last one, the last stage, it's like a vesicular micro uh, circulator, uh, circulation system that uh, support all metabolic processing in brain tissue. Uh, look on this page on this picture. I think that you saw it not not once. More I think that some of you saw it a few times or more. But uh, this picture shows us cortical projection of sensitivity and motor system. The re relative size of uh, the origin reflex uh, the area of cortex from which it relevantization and movements can be caused. The primary motor uh, and some other sensory projection areas uh, is located in the rearmost edge of the frontal lobe and each region within the project projection area controls the motion of specific body parts as illustrated on the top left. The primary somatosensory projection area receiving information from the skin is uh, at the forward edge of the parietal lobe. Each region with this area receives input from a specific body part. Uh, the primary projection area for vision and hearing are located in occipital and temporal lobes uh, respectively. respectively. Uh, these two areas are also organized systematically. For example, in a visual projection area, adjacent areas of the brain receive visual inputs that come from adjacent areas of visual space. Why do we need that information? Because the resultant neurologic deficiency caused by a brain infection depends on which vesicular pool is affected and what part of the brain in a result will be affected. Ischemia in a carotid pool leads to a stroke in the arterial and a middle cerebral arterias, which are accompanied by a dysfunction of cerebral hemispheres. Uh, vertebral vasular ischemia uh, is accompanied uh, by stroke in a region of posterior cerebral artery, which is main feasted by dysfunction of structures of the posterior cranial fossa, a section of the temporal lobe and occipital lobes. That's why, if we will remember about this picture, we will understand what problem will person have in different types of affecting of different arterias. Clinical symptoms and syndromes of the stroke are different and as you understand they depend on which arteria is affected. But most common are aphasia, paresis obliquia, sensory deficit, cognitive deficit, bulbar syndrome is so Colon syndrome, which includes dysphagia, dysphonia, and dysartria, coordinator disorders, uh, visual impairment, it's so called cortical blindness, amyanospsia, and diplopia, and extrapyramidal disorders. If we will talk about stroke, the, the most important information for the dentist is 
to know main factors uh, of risk for the stroke development. And as you see here on the first place is arterial hypertension. Uh, and other factors uh, of risk is lack of regular physical activity, increasing of the body mass index, uh, apoptotin A to B ratio, smoking, and so calling unhealthy food. Uh, and other cardiac causes, uh, the most common one is fibrillation or atrial flutter. Uh, or if the person has a history of myocardial infarction or maybe some kind of rheumatic valve affection or disorders associated with artificial heart valve. Uh, another very common factor of risk is diabetes mellitus, except of that physical stress and pay attention depression. And the last one is very interesting. Alcohol consumption, uh, if the person took more than 30 alcoholic units per month, it's a very huge risk factor for the stroke development. Here on, a, on those pictures, you may see the visualization of a stroke. Acute heart attack in a left middle cerebral artery system. Uh, the medi medial section of the lash and area have a gemorrhagic transformation uh, by type of uh, impregnation. If you pay attention, it's here. Yeah, here is the difference. Here is it. Uh, there is a uh, a picture which were made on a uh, diffusion of MRI includes three Teslas. Uh, and you may see here in a different mode the visualization of a stroke. Here is the area of a damage. The result in neurological deficiency and the severity of hemorrhagic stroke condition depends on which part of the brain has hemorrhaged. Uh, parenchyma, ventricular, subarachnoidal space, and the valve of the blood which goes into the brain tissue. It's also an, a picture which shows you uh, the stroke, and here you can see the person who had the first day of the disease, and here in a different, in a different types of MRI, you may see the area of stroke. Here is it. You can see it. It's a different types, but it's absolutely clear, and we, we see that this area are affected. And also here you may see the 14th day of the disease uh, on a different types of MRI, different, uh, different signals, the same person, the same place. It's a form, uh, it's formed area of uh, stroke and it's like recovering phase. What do you think? What is that? Here you can see the problem and the problem with the bleeding. Here is the bleeding starts and here uh, there is no oxygen supplements because all areas are blocked. How do you think? What's the name of this method? Yeah. You are absolutely right, it's angiography. It shows us uh, the vessels uh, the person were inject the contrast, and we make a special photo of the vessels with the contrast inside of it. So here is a problem. Here is a normal, and another thing is the normal ones. And except of that, pay attention here. I think it's also a problem. Uh, Usually, it's a problem with a cholesterol plaque. 
It's also a visualization which made by angiography and here you can see the affected area, the hemorrhagic stroke, here is it, and a problem with the plummets. And the normal one is when we treat the person, a surgical treat. Clinical manifestation of the stroke depends on few factors. First of all, it's a level of risk factor correction. So how many risk factors a person has or uh, how severe those risk factors are. The patient's compliance with the prescriptive treatment. It's a very important part of uh, any disease, including stroke, so uh, the higher level of compliance of the patient, the better results we will have. Uh, another one, it's uh, the effectiveness of treatment on the main disease. If the person has a uh, high blood pressure and the, this disease will be treated well, the risk of having of the stroke will be decreased in times. Another, the body's reserve capacity. It's uh, absolutely individual factor. No one knows uh, his reserve capacity, but the higher capacity, reserve capacity we ha the person has, the better results uh, to the treatment we will have. Uh, another scene is collateral blood circulation. How good is this col collateral works? The severity and prevalence of the pathological process and uh, can contaminate pathology like some kind of additional disease, which may uh, may cause this more severe process. So stroke. Anyway, it's emergency conditions that require the provision of more emergency medical treatment and urgent hospital hospitalization within the therapeutic window of opportunity to the relevant healthcare center that provides specialized medical care. What does it mean? Therapeutic window of opportunity. It's about the time. Uh, the earlier the patient will be hospitalized in a special center, the better chance for staying alive for him. Anyway, if we talk about hospitalization, all patients with suspected stroke must be hospitalized immediately, regardless of age, gender, or severity of illness. Even if you are not sure that you have a uh, deal with a person with a stroke, it's better to hospitalize such kind of person to make special checkups than to think that severity is not enough because it may cost the life for the person. Ne what necessary action for you to do if you suspect a stroke. First of all, you need to pick up a medical anamnesis and you need to do it very quickly. What we are gonna talk on this point, we need to ask about some, first of all, about blood pressure. Is it normal or is it high? If the person has arterial hypertension, does he took his pills? Uh, maybe he has some kind of emotional stress and so on. So you need to find the information about the factors of risk and what happens today if the person has some kind of, I don't know, some extraordinary situation in his life or maybe he do some kind of extra work and so on. Then you need to carry out an examination of the patient uh, to check his clinical condition and to make all necessary checkups. First and the easiest checkup is just to talk to a patient and pay your attention on his ability to speak. 
does he speak fluently does he understand the words what you're saying to him does he understand the question can the person immediately and correctly answer on the questions very important thing uh, for analyzing if you talk about stroke and if the person need it you need to provide emergency uh, hospitalization of uh, in a secondary stage uh, center for specialized treatment um, a little more, more about examination of the patient clinical condition physical examination the most important rule for you is evolution of the general condition and vital function consciousness breathing circula circulation according to abcd algorithm if it's necessary you need to provide the first days or resuscitation measurement how we need to assess the neurological status of the patient uh, for that we use checkups for signs of a stroke on a fast skull. Fast skull, it's face, arm, speech, time. This time is up to seven minutes. Uh, about speech, I already talked to you what kind of questions you need to ask. And the main information they need, you need to check is if the person has speech disorders or no. So you mark in your documents yes or no about speech disorders paresis of mimic muscles uh, you also need to be sure if it's yes or no what you're gonna do here you're gonna ask your patient to smile to show a tongue to close his eyes uh, and in a case if you see the asymmetric movements of the mimic muscles you need to pay yes and describe what part is changed left or right and last one it's a weakness in the arm you need to ask your patient to raise his arm and pay uh, your attention if the arms will be in a similar level uh, or maybe uh, one of arm will be lower or maybe the person cannot raise it at all you also ch uh, choose the answer yes or no does the person have it or no and in a case if he has it you need to choose right or left having the answer on these three parts you make a conclusion if the person has the sides of strokes or no Okay, next. If you need to provide a first medical aid, what are you gonna do? First of all, you need to give for the person, to choose for the person the correct position. What does it mean, correct position? Uh, you put the patients on a back, with the head and rise on 30 degrees using a handle tool anyway anything you have no matter it's going to be like a chair a pillow your dental chair for example and so on then to prevent aspiration you need to turn the patient's head to any side in a case of respiratory or circulatory disorders, the treating life, it's necessary to immediately carry out the ABCD algorithm, all of you know it, uh, and start the resuscitation. Next. And a little bit information about steps of treatment. We have few steps of treatment first of all is basic treatment which included in intensive care for the patient who are in critical condition and the first place is respiratory function supports and airway, airway protection uh, support for cardiovascular function blood pressure correction infusion therapy 
except for that a glucose level correction and correction of the body temperature if the person needs it. The second step of a treatment is a specific uh, medical treatment in neurology department. Uh, if the person needs it and the clinic may do it, it's a surgical treatment. Uh, we can remove the plaque, for example, or make a stent, put the stent inside of the artery if it's ischemic uh, stroke. And the next false part of the treatment, it's treatment of the complication of stroke. Usually we deal with two types of uh, complication. It's somatic or so-called systemic complication and neurological complication. And the last uh, step, but it's the most important one <laughs> if the person stays alive, uh, it's rehabilitation. Uh, the better rehabilitation the person has, the uh, better abilities for his social life uh, the person will have. What kind of neurological complications are the most common one? First of all, is post-stroke pain, and it bothers patient very much. If you, if the person feels the pain, it will his main complaint, and anyway, it will be the most bothering complaint, as you understand. Also, the person may have epileptic neither, uh, which appears after stroke. If, uh, in case if the person has no, uh, no sneezer before and psychomotor agitation as well. What kind of systemic or somatic complications a person may have? The most common one is respiration pneumonia. It's because of problems uh, with the uh, nerve system and nerve regulation of uh, melting opportunities. Uh, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary arterial thrombosis. Uh, swallowing disorders or dysphagia, it can be as a reason for aspiration pneumonia as uh, similar symptoms uh, of systemic complication. Uh, nutritional disorders in a stroke patient, it's, um, they ha have no opportunity to eat or they change eating opportunities or they have problems with uh, breakups, uh, the meal inside of the stomach and so on. Bad source because of the problems with the abilities of the movement, uh, violation, of the, violation of the defecation and urination, and uh, the most common problem is falling over the patient with a stroke so they cannot stand by themselves or without somebody's help. Uh, here is the um, graphic which shows us the uh, uh, consequence of the ischemic stroke. And if you pay attention, here is the most common one is cognitive impairment and gemiparesis. But almost 35% has a depression and as, as a consequence of ischemic stroke. The most important thing that we need to remember is the prevention of stroke. Usually we talk about primary and secondary prevention. So primary prevention always includes correction of the risk factors. Uh, taking a control of arterial hypertension, of hypercholesterolemia, of coagulation disorders, hyperdynamia, uh, you need to uh, Give an advice for your patient to quit smoking, to quit using too much of uh, alcohol, and so on. And the secondary prevention is recognition of a brain arterial, a syndication of ischemic stroke if the person needed. That's all information for today. Thank you for your uh, for your attention. If you have any questions, you may give it to me. Uh, you may write to me and I will answer. So, thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye.